Okay. All right. So we're getting our goggles on, and the equipment we're going to need is our solid base. We're going to need some KHP. That's good. okay. We need to be a weighing boat, and we need a scoopula. All right. Then we'll fill in, and we'll go from there. So. A lot of calculations to figure out what this is. But the first thing we need to do is make our strong base. And as we've talked about before previously, maybe, and this is a scale that's going to give me some problems. I want to re-zero that out. No, I just turned it off. Okay, it's going to basically tear out the weight. So, uh, looking at your, who's got calculations of, you guys are working together, so you're going to have to decide what you want to do, but... So the first step is you need to do the stoichiometry. How many tablets are we going to crush in this lab today? I have two. Okay, so both have two, good. So when you did two, and you did the stoichiometry correctly, you should have came out with 0 .00722 moles of hydroxides. That's gonna be your target amount. Yeah. Okay, good. Now the question is, how much extra do you wanna add? Because the Shetler's principle, we're gonna add extra, okay? So if you have 0.0722 from the stoichiometry, taking 650 milligrams of aspirin and using the molecular mass of 180 and knowing two hydroxides are necessary for one aspirin, we get the 0.00722. So how much extra do you want to add? That's the question. What did what do you have there, Leila? What did I you say? 0.1. So you added 0.1, okay. Or wait, 0.01. 0.01, okay, that's a, that's a, that's a good one there. So you have 0.01 extra that you, that you. So then that I had 0.017. Perfect, I like that, I would have done that too. So for those at home, okay, okay, for those at home, I'm just gonna write this out on a, on a piece of paper, uh, right down here to, to, to show you what we're doing, okay? You can follow along and make sure we're on the same, same path here. So we've taken two tablets. The tablets are written to be uh, 325 milligrams. So they're 325 milligrams. Of course, that is equal to 650 milligrams. Of course, when I convert them to grams, that's 0.65 grams of aspirin. Okay, now, what we did is we take the 0.65 grams of aspirin, okay, and using the molecular mass, we know that's 180 grams per one mole. We're cool, we don't write the E there. And so that gives us moles of aspirin. We know aspirin is a weak acid, okay? And so now we know that, hey, for every one aspirin, for reasons we've already explained, we need two hydroxides. That's different from your homework, okay? And so when we do that math, we get 0 0.00722. And that's moles of hydroxides that will be needed to neutralize that weak acid, okay? So I like to write that as an arrow down. That's the target amount if each tablet was 325. So that's 0 0.00722, that's target. But as I said to you, we need to add excess. This is a back titration, we're gonna drive the reaction forward. And so um, one of your lab partners, your virtual lab partners, and I, and I like this, she wanted the excess to be 0 0.01. 0 0.01, added to that, it's a nice number, is 0 0.01722. So her, her target excess is 0 0.01. Okay, so that gives me a total amount of moles of excess hydroxide to be 0 0.01 or at 0 0.01722 moles of hydroxide needed. Now, what do I care? I've got to make a solution. Okay, so here comes another arbitrary value. How much of this solution? Now, think with me, party people, to make a volumetric solution, we need a, a volumetric flask, and I thought I had, oh, there it is. And the volumetric flasks we're using are 100 milliliter flasks. So we're gonna make 100 milliliters of this. The question is, I wanna use some of it to standardize and some of it to deliver that amount of excess to the, to the tablets. And then eventually, of course, 
we're gonna titrate back. Okay, but the point is, I wanna make 100 milliliters. Okay, but I wanna use 40 milliliters of this, or 30, what did you decide to do? I used 40. Okay, good. So, because molarity is equal to moles over liters, 0.04. Okay, so what was your value for the molarity of your solution? Uh, 0.4305. Oh, 0.4305. Okay, I'm gonna keep that rough right. number right now. Okay, so that's the concentration of the base they wanna make. Okay, now, we're gonna not gonna make 40 milliliters exactly. We're gonna make 100 milliliters. So molarity is equal to what? Moles over liter. Oops, see, I know you can't see that, sorry. Moles over liter. So, that's the molarity. I want to make a liter of it. I'm sorry, 100 milliliters. That's 0 0.0 liters. Remember, molarity is per liter, so 100 milliliters is 0.1 liter. And now I'm going to solve for the moles I need. Remember, molarity is a ratio of the dissolved substance per volume. I want to make more of it, so I will need more moles to keep that same value. So when I take 0.1 and times it by 0.4305, I can do this one in my head. I get 0.0. Four, three, zero, oh, five, and that's the moles of hydroxide needed to make that solution. Now, how do I get the grams? Because right here is my sodium chloride solid, so I convert that to grams. And to do so, I'll just rewrite this: 0 0.04305. three, zero, oh, five. Hey, mole. So what do I do there? Get rid of mole, mole goes in the bottom, and if you've been to the molecular mass party, the base that we're using is NaOH, 23 plus 16 plus one is approximately 40 grams per mole. So you're timesing that by 40. And when you times that by 40, how many grams did you get? Let's do that, because so I know that you used the rounded value and I just kept the raw number there. Point oh four three oh five times forty. One point seven two. So one point seven two two. We'll do seven two grams of NaOH. So what that means is I need one point seven two grams, and I'm going to dissolve that in a hundred milliliters. So how do we do that? We're going to take a weighing boat. Let's zero it out. You're going to add 1.72 grams of NaOH to it, careful, and then we're going to dissolve it in here, and I'll walk you through that. So that's what they're doing now, okay? Your lab partners are anonymous, but you know that person is wearing orange today. <laughs> what you can't tell is that they also have orange goggles on, maybe. <laughs> Sorry, I'm all about... Now, it's gonna be hard to use that big tablets to get the 172, so what we'll do is we'll crush some, okay? Hopefully we crush this lab. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll crush some to get there. Yeah, one needs to. Sometimes the tablets are, the tablets are different sizes. Okay, so put a tablet in here. All we're doing is putting a tablet into a mortar and pestle, and then it'll crush a little bit and take little pieces of it with the, with, don't touch with the hand, but with the, uh, the scupula and add those crushed little amounts to try to get it to 1.72 the best you can. All right, I need a piece of paper. Cool, that's a great job right there. That's a great job. Okay, we're gonna take this away because this is dirty. Give me that, that pestle. Okay, well, we don't wanna put that there. Now, what you're gonna do is, 
Because it's plastic, you're going to bend it carefully mm -hmm. and put it into this volumetric flask. So just carefully bend it and try to get it in there. And I'm going to give you a flask filled with distilled water. We don't want to use tap water. Tap water does not have a pH of 7. I'm going to give you some water. Do you want to do it? So this is distilled water. Yep, careful. And that's what's the t oh, okay. That's, that's okay, don't touch. Uh, so uh, grab, we'll grab that tablet with the um, little tablet came off, but you can do this. Okay, so take a piece of forcep, uh, use a forcep here, and grab that little tablet, put it back in. And if you think you have some remnants, if you think you have a little bit of um, a powdered sodium hydroxide there, you can wash that off. If you think you got all the solids off, you're good. I think they're all off. Okay, good. Now, what you want to do is pre-dissolve it. There, there's a, um, there's a beaker of distilled water I just gave you. Now, you do not want to fill this up to the top. Okay, you want to just kind of fill it halfway and pre-dissolve it. Like yep, yeah, just careful. Who's a good pourer? Hold the bottom of the flask because it could fall over. Fill about halfway. Good. That's enough. Put the top on. Yep, put that to hold the bottom flask always. Put the top on and twist. Okay. And now what you want to do, it's a group one ion. Oh, does it fit? Let me see. Oh, the other way. There you go. There you go. There you go. Now you just want to take this and kind of swirl it till it dissolves. And we'll keep doing that. All right? And watch the dissolve. Now, why that's happening, that? yep, why that's happening, what we're going to do now is we're going to take two aspirin tablets and we're going to crush them and put them on a hot plate because remember, the, um, the tablets, aspirin has an acetyl group that was going to hydrolyze into um, vinegar or acetic acid. So we have to heat it to drive all of the aspirin into its two acidic components. It has one acidic functional group already. So I'm going to give you two tablets because you guys designed a lab with two tablets. All right. Support so two tabs here, or you can use the um, forceps. Actually, the forceps have some hydroxide on it. So just try to pour two. Yep. And you're going to crush the two tablets. And then I'm going to give you a hot plate so that we can heat the solution. You're kind of just dissolving there. So, hot plate. Now, just let that sit for a second. And, okay, now you keep that in there because some data's on there, correct? Yeah. yeah, so you have the wash bottle to wash that off. Okay, now, what we want to do is we want to transfer all of that powdered uh, a bear tablet into a beaker, to a clean beaker. And I'm going to leave. Doesn't matter if you add water to it because it's all about the moles of the what? It's all about the moles of the Calcium. yeah of the aspirin or the acetyl salicylic acid, right? Okay, cool. Now add some water. Remember, I gave you yep. You can pour some water directly in that. Don't expect it to dissolve. It takes takes a while, but yeah, just add that. And you're gonna pour that here, trying to get all of the what? All the powder into this beaker. You so so you're gonna pour that into that beaker and then use the what? Use the wash bottle. Use the wash bottle to um, yep, 
to get all of that remnants because that, that's there's your data. Okay. Now, while he's doing that and heating that, and the reason why we're heating is to what? Help the water give it its energy to smack into that acetyl group and kick out the acetate, okay, or acetic acid component. We're helping it split into its two acidic components. While that's happening, okay, I'm going to give you some more water. And what you're going to do is you're going to fill carefully to this white line, okay. right? Because this is a volumetric flask. It is very, very precise. So to make an accurate uh, value, you've got to fill right to that little line there. Okay. Yes, someone talk to me. I am recording, so if you miss something, I will post this today. I'm going to do the entire lab right here. Now, you want to, you want to use a, um, uh, a pipette when you get close. So if you're, if you're not sure of yourself, because if you overpass that line, you're going to start all over again. So let me get you some, uh, some distilled water. Okay. Again, distilled water. We want to use something free of any other compounds. So I'm going to give you some distilled water. Okay, you got to hold the bottom of the flask. If you want to add, you know, that's the part we're going to do. So now we're heating this up. And watch out, you got a hot, hot plate here. And all we're doing, of course, is you, you don't want to boil this when you get it hot. Where are we going? The white line, and I'll do like with the pipe that way. Just careful, pull, pull, pour slowly. This is the tedious part. Good job. Have it stop. Okay, that's a pretty good pour. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> that's actually that's they chemist material right there. Okay. okay. And then you're going to use a pipette to just get to that line. Now I would get, remember, eye level. The bottom of that curvature yeah. hits that gray line. The accuracy of your, of your lab depends upon the what? Depends upon the quality or precision in which okay. you make those measurements. Uh, on this side, it looks like that. Yeah, to do the curve. Yeah. If that curve touches that gray line, you're done. Uh -huh. Okay, now carefully put... The Wait, top, the, the bottom of the curve. The bottom of the curve. Oh, the, the bottom is not touching. Okay, you're right. So you need a few more drops to yeah. get the bottom part of that meniscus, because of the surface tension of the water, has to touch that gray line again. Tell me when to stop. All right. Uh. Let me see. Okay, put the top on and make sure you put it on and twist. So it's nice and sealed. And then, okay, now you want to just mix it up. So turn it, turn it upside down a little bit. Make sure the top is on. Put that right side up just so it mixes. Just so I keep doing that? Yeah, and there you go. You're like a chemist now. All right. Cool. That was a good pour, though. I'll give you credit right there. Under the camera and everything, that was a pretty good pour. I know. I, I thought I was going to start shaking. <laughs> you're, you're definitely all under the pressure place. there. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. Okay. So that's all mixed up and ready to go. So the next step now, okay, in this process is to figure out, okay, how much, because the problem with the, with the strong base, that's why we put the cover back on. The problem with the strong base is that whatever we calculated, you guys did a great job of making sure the volume and measuring. The question is, NaOH is so gosh darn reactive to the air, it absorbs water, it's deliquescent, and CO2 is turning into sodium carbonates. There's no way that that concentration is what we calculated for because it's so gosh darn reactive. So we're gonna have to test and standardize. So um, to do that, I need some arbitrary values. So the question is, we designed this lab, okay? What did you, uh, oh, Christmas, okay. Maybe that comment actually makes sense this time. Okay, so given this, what was your arbitrary amount that you want to do? So we're going to add some of that base. We're going to use 40 milliliters of it to get to the excess. But how much of this do we want to titrate? How much of it? 
How much do you want to drop to get to a good point? What is your arbitrary value? Do you want to use 10, 15 milliliters? What I think I said 18. 18? That's kind of... Or 8. Okay. Or eight. Okay. I'll calculate or back calculate what you're going to... So the problem here, guys, is that we have a burette that we're going to use. Not a problem. And we're going to take this base right here. Uh, and what was the concentration? It was 0.4 something. What was it? What was the... 0.4305. Now, it's not exactly that. It's going to be less than that, but that's the molarity. And what we want to do is we want to standardize with KHP. Yeah. Okay. So the question is, how much do you want to drop? How much do you want to drop to reach the equivalence point? I said 8 milliliters, and then we do it drop by drop. Okay, so then therefore about 10 then. Yeah. Okay, so let's say your target amount, and this is arbitrary, you want to add 10 milliliters of this base. Because we don't want to use 50, because we made 100 of this. We want to use 40 of it to be the excess, and the rest will test. So let's say 10 milliliters is our target amount to reach equivalence. OK, so here's what I do here. Molarity is equal to moles over liter. We have a 0 0.4305 what? molar solution. and we're arbitrarily deciding to use 10 milliliters. Remember, the bottom number has to be in liters, so 0 0.10 liter. And so we're going to solve algebraically for moles. So what we're really doing is always molarity. Is it 0 0.4305? 0 0.4305. Okay, so it's molarity times the liters, and we're arbitrarily deciding that this is it. That's going to give me the moles of hydroxide. Okay, what is that number? What is 0 0.4305? Okay, times. Is it 0 .0? Okay, yeah, I definitely could have done that in my head. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that's going to be 0 0.04305. Okay, I didn't see it was that easy. Okay, cool. And that's moles of what? Hydroxide that we're going to use. Well, hello, this is stoichiometry for acid base. That has to equal the exact moles of your weak acid. So what we found out here, which is your weak acid is really H plus. So we just, by deciding that we want to use 10 milliliters to be our target amount we want to titrate, and this is important in your design, people, because I don't want to use 55. These, these, these uh, what, burettes only hold 50, so that's a good amount. Besides, I don't want to waste too much of this. I want to use about 40 of this. So how do we figure out how much KHP we need? Well, I know that I need what? 0. 0.00405 uh, moles. And I want to convert to grams. One mole of KHP is 204. We'll use that number. So now I need to do 0. 0.00405 times 204. And that'll give me the grams of KHP needed. Because what we did is we took the molarity, times it by the volume to get the moles of hydroxide, which is the moles of KHP, because we're going to do this to equivalence point. Oh, I thought okay. I must have heard it yeah, look at that. calculator. Yep. Uh, I heard a deep voice. That must be Gavin. What's up, Gavin? Oh my gosh, I just, uh, thank you. Isn't it 0. 0.4305, guys? 0. 0.4305. Yes, okay, thank you, Gavin. I don't know, Grotsky's involved, so sometimes he makes errors. So I don't know where happened here. So yeah, bad Grotsky. 0. 0.004, three, I forgot the three goes in there. Yeah, yeah. for 305, for 30. So this becomes 0. 0.00.4305. 0. Thank you, Gavin. Okay, it's a team effort for sure, right? I don't know what happened there. I just, my brain thought of it, but my hand didn't write it, okay? So you got 0 0.004305. We're gonna times that by 204. And what do you guys get for that? So 0 0.004305. 0 0.8, oh no, what is it? Yeah, 0 .8. A lot of pressure. 
<laughs> this is a video I'll use forever in my class. You can give me, you're immortal. <laughs> I just made a mistake that I'll have forever, so don't worry. Okay, so everyone's checking at home. Eight, so we get seven, point. Eight, yeah, that makes sense. 0. 0.878 grams of KHP. That's what you're going to measure now. And what's cool about KHP, why do we use KHP? It's a solid. It doesn't react. It's got a big molecular mass, so if I'm off, so you're going to measure that. You're going to put this in a beaker. You're going to add an arbitrary amount of water. We don't care about the water. So when you're dealing with solids to make a solution like this, we don't have to be careful to fill to a certain line. So it's so much easier. So now we take a clean um, weighing boat. Okay. Take a clean weighing boat. Let me set this up. You can see what we're doing. We're not lying. We're doing it live here in Studio Grodzki. Okay. So we're going to zero this off again. I think we hit zero. This, this scale sometimes I have to turn it off and on. I feel bad, but now I have to do it. Okay. Oh, oh it did it. Christmas. Now I got to do it again with the thing on. <laughs> bad Grodzki. So what we're going to do is tearing out the weight. There we go. Okay, so you can, So now you're going to add, the KHP is here, and uh, let's use a clean right, scupula. Yeah. And what's great about KHP, guys, it is, um, it is uh, a nice granular solid. You can clearly get exactly the grams. You don't have to crush anything. It doesn't react, doesn't grab water. Remember, to standardize in any way, we've got to be confident that our weak acid value of moles is accurate. And again, the reason why we're doing this is we want to know exactly what the concentration is of our base because that's the key to deciding how much aspirin we have. And this is warm. Yeah. I don't want to boil this because it is an organic compound, too much heat. I just want to keep this hot. Okay. As we're trying to hydrolyze as much aspirin as possible. I'm going to ask uh, my other student B, <laughs> okay, to take a stirring rod and just gently stir the aspirin solution that we're heating. Just kind of stir it. Okay, I think we. Okay, all Evan is. I'm oh, sorry, uh, person E. <laughs> Student E. I have student L and student E. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I haven't given them away already. All right. Uh, good. That's good. Now wash it off with a wash bottle, right? That could be some data there. I mean, working for the FDA right now. Okay, cool. Yep, very good. That looks better. It looks like it's dissolving. Keep that warm. And student L is making sure we get exactly the 8.78. Yeah, you can just put that to the side. Good. We won't use that again anyway. All right. And now, I'm going to keep this warm. Get this out of the way. What we're going to do now is take some of that base solution you made. And what we're going to do is we're going to... Um, the waste beaker. What we're going to do not, is we're going to rinse this burette with the titrant. It's jumping. That's okay. Put your hands off. See what happens. 0.878. A little less. I'll help. It's such a crazy amount. I think it's good. Oh, maybe not. Let's grab a little bit. It's always easy to add some. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah, I think we're as good as we're going to get. Yeah, okay, good. Now, what you're going to do, carefully add that here. You may have to wash it off. What student E is going to do, okay, is he's going to take some of the base solution that we made carefully, and we're going to rinse that burette. So he's going to add some of that base solution right into the burette. Okay, another beerette right there is the right there. And make sure it's over the waste beaker. 
and, they're, and what we're doing is we're rinsing the burette to make sure that if there's any other compounds in it, we're not diluting. You have to know what this is. So add about five milliliters or so. And it's open, so she should come right out. Good, and that's enough. And let that run out, and that's now we're rinsing the beer so therefore when we add the actual amount, we're not diluting it. Should it and, be coming out? Yeah, it should be coming out, it's coming out, yep. And good, and then, student L has definitely helped me help us out here. We're gonna add a little bit more uh, distilled water into that. We don't care how much water, that's so great about KHP, you already know the moles, who cares about the water? The volume's not important here, good. All right, cool. Uh, yeah, if you added a little more, it wouldn't matter, but it's good. Yep. <laughs> oh, too much. Just kidding. Perfect, because you got the moles in there. Okay, now let's turn that burette off to the side. No, uh, uh, to, okay, just turn it away from the. Um, oh. Yep. Uh, 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 take the clamp, unloosen uh, the clamp to the right. I'm going. This clamp right here. Just unloosen it and just turn it away because now you're gonna put you wanna put that on the magnetic spinner. Cool. So you don't want that any of that stuff dropping. No, don't take it off, just kind of turn it. Just turn it like yeah, get it away from there. There you go. Take the waste speaker off, put the solution of KHP. And what we're gonna do here is turn it on, turn on the magnetic stir, so we want, to, we want to dissolve that. That's made of potassium ions, right? We've dealt with KHP in a, a titration already. So uh, yeah, you go, turn it on. We're gonna spin that guy, good. And we're gonna wait for that dissolves. That should dissolve pretty quickly. Group one ions do that, weird. It's not weird, actually. Coulomb's law. Okay, now what we can do now is add some phenolphthalein because we're not gonna use pH probes just yet. What we're going to do is we're going to um, uh, add some phenolphthalein. We're going to titrate with uh, an endpoint. Okay, so phenolphthalein is right next to it. Add about three drops. I think I had two bottles there. I don't know why. All right, cool beans. Uh, is the KHP dissolved? Can you see any solids left? Uh, yes, it's All right, so give that a couple, couple more, no, a minute or so, it should be dissolved. And this is still warm, good, but cool. All right, so the next step now is while the burette is off to the side, you know, our target, our math, okay, we were saying in our math here that we were gonna use approximately 10 milliliters to get to the end point. I suggest you add about 15 milliliters. Okay, don't fill this all up now. Now, when you hold on, when you fill this to 15 milliliters, remember, it stops at 50, so I would I would definitely go to the 35 milliliter mark. Okay, okay. Um, now, so you're gonna take the base solution that we just made in the volumetric flask. Okay. Nope, that's nothing. Volumetric flask. Right there. <laughs> okay, it's okay. All right, now you're going to pour, with this closed, you're going to pour it up to the 35 million mark. Yep. And try to stay away from your solution, right? So work over this way. So all student E is going to do is he's adding to about the 35 million mark. And the reason for that is that we expect, based upon our arbitrary value, 10 milliliters to get to the end point. But we know that the strong base is reacting with the air, it's reacting with water, okay? So it's gonna be less concentrated. And if you're over a little bit, I'd add some more. What do you got there, what's the value there, 35? 32. Get, get more because I, uh, for other reasons, people are finding that they need more. Okay. So yeah, just keep going, just add about five more. Right. You have plenty, of, have plenty of extra. Keep going. Okay. Now, I need you to exactly read that number. It will not be perfect. Burettes are very precise pieces of equipment. So 
the bottom of that meniscus, give me a number, okay? Now you're gonna be measuring, of course, the air, but you're measuring that number. That's gonna be our initial. And then whatever we end up with, we'll subtract it to get the total volume, okay? Twenty-eight point three five. I'm gonna confirm that with you. Um, I'm getting twenty-seven. Oh. Well, okay. Yeah. You're gonna measure the air. Okay. It's kind of weird because it's an empty device. So I get. Uh, yeah. I get twenty-seven point six five. Yeah. Okay. That's your. That's your starting. Okay. Now move that burette over your case, uh, KHP solution which by the way is now dissolved, you have the phenolphthalein. I would add, once you're ready, about eight milliliters, and then go drop by drop. We expect 10, it'll be more than 10, but you don't have to sit to do drop by drop, you know 10 is the, is the, is the mark, so yeah. So 20, yeah, good job. So what student E's doing is he knows the initial 27 point something, and he wants to go to about 30, yeah. So open it up, and try to add eight, Okay, no need to go drop by drop in the beginning because we know it should be about 10. Okay. And again, we're using an indicator. Okay, now go drop by drop. Oh, oh. You have to take some skill to go, yeah, that kind of, uh, 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 yeah. slow movement, steady hands. Show me your steady hand. There you go. Let's let, let, let and then, yep. Uh. <laughs> let me give you some help there. Oh, yeah, yeah, some okay. Hold on. Yeah, I'm I know, it's kind of tough. Sometimes these burettes are touchy. Okay. Let me, let me, let me give it a try. Because yeah, maybe, because maybe, maybe it's, it's this, I'm just going to touch it just a little bit. I'm applying a little bit of pressure. I think you are. Oh, I just kind of. Now, the question is are we getting any color yet? No. You definitely added the phenol feeling, correct? Yeah. I'm starting to see a tiny oh, bit. Oh, okay. If you're seeing a tiny bit, then this is good. My other classes weren't as careful in their measurements. Okay. Do you see a color change? Yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. I mean, I'm colorblind, so I need help. <laughs> I know. Now, that color change is lasting longer and longer. It's flashing brighter. Yeah. So we know we're getting closer. So I'm going to slow this down. Oh, I went the wrong way, too. Uh, and I'm the trained professional. Boom. Yeah, today I'm yeah. kind of helping more because I'm helping those at home. <laughs> Uh-oh. We're really close. Yeah. Yep. Probably one more. If this was a full class, I would have been able to. You guys are by yourself. That one drop. Yeah. Can now measure that final volume, and then you're gonna subtract that. Measuring the air. Yes. They're doing a great job. So carefully measure that air again. I'm not telling you, I'm not saying you're arrogant. <laughs> Sorry, I have my problem with my puns. Okay. It's gonna make 38.77? Okay. Eight maybe? 38.77. And what was the first number? 27.65. So party people, okay, I'm just gonna show the work here, back to our math. I love how the math means something. Okay, I don't know why I'm over. Okay, hold on, give me a second. Okay. Okay, so our initial one was 27.65, and we ended up at 38.8. So the difference here, what's the difference? 38.77 minus I guess I can do it by hand, right? So that's gonna be a two, that's a one, that's a one. So if I'm not mistaken, I got a 11.12 milliliter difference. That's exactly yeah. the milliliters added. 
Now, hold on. This is so interesting. Maybe not, but I think it's cool. You just, you thought it'd be 10. We just, we thought it'd be 10 milliliters. It took more. It took more because the solution was a little bit more diluted to get to those moles. Okay. Now, the, so our concentration of our base, okay, is not 0 0.4035. It's less. We're going to find that right now. Watch how I do this. So by doing what we just did here, we're going to find a new concentration. It's going to be less. Watch what I do here. The molarity is equal to moles over liter. Well, the moles that we just what? The moles that we just titrated in that beaker to its endpoint of KHP was 0 0.004305. That is no, that is definite. We definitely made 0 0.004305. 305 moles of KHP, which equals the same moles of the base. Okay. And what was the volume? Has to be in liters. So 0 0.01112 liters. Now calculate that molarity now. It's going to be a little less than 0 0.305. 0 0.4305, sorry. So 0 0.004305 divide by the new volume. What do we got? I got 0.387. Yeah, good. 0 0.3 what? 87. 3.3.8. No, 0.387. I need help. Okay, got it. 0.387. We'll stick with the three sig figs. That's the new molarity. And that's the molarity we're going to use for the base now. It was definitely weaker. Why was it weaker? Because NaOH is a reactive uh, solid in the air. So the molarity of our hydroxide concentration is 0.387. Okay. We're going to take a mask break and get back to you.